Well, after lots of work and lots of building, the Jag is on the road. And by on the road, I mean it's on a trailer that's on the road. There hasn't been a ton of progress on the Jag lately, at least not any major steps forward. This is because I've been busy. Most recently I was at Pikes Peak, but I also just moved house. I had to figure out how to get all my stuff from one place to the other, and among all my stuff are two very old cars, one of which doesn't exactly move under its own power. Or stop. Or steer. So I had to make that happen. It turned out to be a significantly bigger challenge than I originally expected. Before I move, I need to get the car ready to move, and by that I mean I need to be able to get it onto a trailer. I need to be able to steer it, I need the brakes to work, and I need the body securely attached to the frame. The body is attached to the frame with four bolts on either side. There were another six on the inside that I took out when I cut out that big X-brace, but I'm trying to add them back in with this weird T-looking thing. I got it all welded up and I started to put it in the car, but I realized I would need to lift the body up to get it in and then I would need to screw it in and tap a bunch of holes and do a bunch of other stuff and I probably don't need it, so I'll just go ahead and skip it. The outside bolts, the four that go on either side, I definitely need those, but the ones I made are too short. I welded bolts to steel squares so that I could get them on without having to get a wrench on the other side, but the bolts are too short, but they're just barely too short. So I'm going to have to cut new squares and get longer bolts and weld them on and then paint the squares and, you know, I probably don't have time for this. I'm actually just going to use the old bolts. It will only grab a couple of threads, but that's enough. The first two threads take most of the load anyway. Let's move on to the steering. I need adapters from this BMW rack to these rod ends that I bought to work with my custom uprights. I started to make these out of steel, but it was taking forever because my lathe is not a very good lathe. So I just made some out of aluminum. It's fine, they're good enough for now, but I will have to replace them later. The steering column will have to wait for the brakes because I don't know exactly where the brakes are gonna go, so I need to put the brake booster in with the pedals and then I can get the steering column where it needs to go. But of course, before I get the pedals in, I need to cover up this gaping hole where a transmission tunnel once was. So I traced out the pattern onto some steel, cut it, and welded it in. super hard to weld it the metal just it's that's the best weld right there that's as good as it gets then i sealed it all up with some construction adhesive i happen to have lying around the brake booster i'm using is from a tesla model 3 just like my powertrain it has the ability to adjust braking force based on input from stability control and some other stuff, but I'm actually just going to throw 12 volts at it and run it in fail-safe mode. This will sort of make it just work like a regular vacuum booster. I got a front seat from a Tesla, put it in, and immediately decided that I'm not going to use it. I really want the interior to be kind of like it was in 1950, but with new non-shitty leather. But I did use the Tesla seat to set up the brake and acceleration pedal locations. Once I decided on the pedal location, I marked it on the firewall, and then I reinforced the firewall with some 8th inch aluminum. The brake pedal on this car originally went to the frame, so the firewall is not really set up for a brake pedal or the brake pedal forces, which is why I needed to reinforce it. I also added some sound deadening mat. This will keep the sound down and prevent the Jag from sounding like my Honda S600. With the brake booster in, it was time to get the column in. I have this powered column from a Toyota. Unfortunately, the original location of the column is exactly where the brake booster is now, so... You know what? We're running out of time. Let's just skip the steering column for now. Let's go to the brake lines. That was a couple of videos ago that went pretty well, except that I didn't actually get to finish running all the brake lines, or bleeding them, or any of that. In fact, I didn't really finish anything I wanted to do. I suppose the body is adequately tied to the frame, and the wheels do kind of point the same direction, so that's nice. The fenders are gigantic, and I figured the easiest way to move these would be to just bolt them onto the car. In fact, I just assembled most of the big things back into the car.
I also needed to be able to roll the car and the electronic parking brake was on, so I had to hotwire those open. U-Haul has been slammed apparently since the beginning of the pandemic. I had to drive an hour to pick one up in Fremont. Fortunately, I was also getting a car trailer, so I just drove my 4Runner and loaded it on the trailer, then towed it back home. When I got back home, I had to do some musical cars. I had to get the 4Runner off the trailer and then disconnect the trailer from the U-Haul and then put the trailer on the 4Runner. I needed the 4Runner hooked up to the trailer to get the Jag on. I'll go over this in a moment. After that, it was time to load the S600 into the back of the U-Haul. This is a delicate thing, and if you don't do it right, it could turn out to be a disaster. Why did you turn? Thankfully, it all worked out just fine. I was really nervous about this. No, I wasn't actually. This is the fourth time I've done this. The only real drawback of doing this is that you can't strap the car down. You just have to sort of hope gravity works harder than inertia. I don't recommend loading cars into the back of U-Hauls for this exact reason, but the S600 is so narrow that it won't fit on any car carriers. It's also just barely too long for the largest utility trailer. I could get a flatbed, but I had to tow the Jag anyway, so here we are. After I got the small Honda in, I put the other small Honda in. Getting the Jag on the trailer was a huge pain. It didn't drive or steer or stop, so I had to use the winch on the front of the 4Runner to pull it up onto the trailer, but my driveway is sloping downward, so I also had to use another winch inside the house to keep it from rolling down the ramp and into the back of the 4Runner. This took some time, which wasn't great since it was already dark when I started. Things got worse when I realized I didn't have the clearance to get onto the trailer. The sloped driveway made the back of the trailer higher than it normally is. The Jag has decent ground clearance, but it also has the wheels way out front and way out back. This means it has a terrible breakover angle. Breakover angle is perfectly illustrated with this trailer loading problem. On a Jeep, you have decent ground clearance, but also a great breakover angle because the front wheels are close to the back wheels. The Jag has wheels that are really far apart. This means that the back of the trailer wants to tickle the Jag's belly, the Jag's belly being a thousand pound high voltage battery. The battery is protected well enough, but to even get it on the trailer, I had to jack up the back of the car and just drag the floor jack forward with the car. Sometime after midnight, the car was loaded and strapped in. The next day, I headed off. After a few miles of driving, I stopped and double-checked everything in the back. Smells like gas. That's probably why they don't want you to put cars back here. And then I was on my way. But soon I hit a dead stop traffic jam in the middle of nowhere. Thanks, California. I took a quick stop by the superchargers so the Jag could say hi to its brothers and sisters. Several of you are wondering if the Jag will ever be back to get its own supercharged electrons, and I have an answer for that that I will give you in two weeks. Unloading the Jag was far easier than loading it. It pretty much just rolled off the trailer. The S600 also unloads pretty easily, but I enlisted the help of a Bobby to make sure it didn't push the ramps off the back. And that's about it. Both cars are in their new home. And next week, I promise actual progress. We might even have the motor running and the wheel spinning. No promises. I'm not really sure what other questionable ideas I'm going to have for my cars in the future, but I can guarantee I will have them. So hit that subscribe button and find out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>